Hi, it's Phil here from Revive My Ride. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a car battery load test with a multimeter to check to see if you have a bad car battery. And if you do decide to replace your battery, stick around to the end of the video because I have a few tips for you that will help you select the best battery for you. Before we start the test, we need to make sure that the battery is fully charged and that the car battery terminals and clamps are clean as well. Otherwise, we might get a false result. Done that already? Okay, let's get straight to it. The first thing we need to do is attach the multimeter probes to the battery. So of course the red ones go into the positive terminal and the black ones go into the negative. Normally the probes will just wedge in between the clamp and the terminal and hold itself in place. Now set your meter to read DC voltage. If your multimeter has the min max function you should go ahead and select it now. But if yours doesn't have this option don't worry because I'll show you how to do the test without it in just a minute. Now it's time to go back to the meter and see what the minimum recorded voltage was. So we need to push the min max button again to make it display the minimum voltage that it's recorded. The number that we're looking for on a good battery is 9.6 volts or higher and that's because many of the ignition system items need this much voltage in order for the car to start. This reading here of 5.66 volts indicates that the battery is bad and that the battery can't maintain the voltage under cold cranking. As a comparison, this is what the test looks like when you have a good battery. So I've set the meter up exactly the same way. And now I'm going to go start the car and then shut it back off again. And this time when we select to see the minimum recorded voltage, we can see it's 9.84 volts, which indicates a good battery. It's probably worth mentioning that that maximum voltage that we saw while the car was running of 14.5 volts indicates that the alternator's working properly. Normally the range would be 13.8 to the high 14s. So if your multimeter doesn't have the min max function, that's not a big problem. You just set the meter up exactly the same as I did before, so to read DC voltage. But this time, when you go to start the car, you need to watch the multimeter so that you can see the voltage drop in real time. Similar to before, if you see a number flash up on the screen that's less than 9.6 volts, then it indicates that you may have a bad battery. If your battery failed the test and you need to replace it, well here are the tips I promised you that will help you choose the best replacement. First, let's start by asking a quick question. Do you expect to have the car for a further 3 to 5 years? The reason I ask is that the average car battery lasts about this period of time from new. So if your answer was no, you plan to sell the car sooner than 3 to 5 years, that leads us to option 1 which is a like for like battery replacement. But if your answer was yes, you plan to keep the car a little bit longer, then that leads us to option two where it might be worth spending a little bit more money and getting a better, more powerful battery. Whew, took some doing. Okay, so let's start with option one, a like for like battery replacement. Let's start with the part number and on this battery you can see that it's 115. If you buy another battery that has the exact same part number then that means dimensionally it should be almost exactly the same and that means it will fit into your battery tray and onto your car and connect the same as well. However, it's always worth double checking that the battery you're buying has the terminals in exactly the same position. So in this example here you can see that the positive and the negative terminals are reversed. The next thing you need to check is the technology that's being used. So you can see here that this one's an AGM battery which stands for absorbent glass mat and it's designed for cars with a stop start function and this type of battery is better able to handle those sort of loads. If your car battery says AGM on it then you have to replace it with another AGM battery. If your car battery doesn't have AGM all over it then it means it's a standard lead acid battery and you should be able to just do the same for a replacement. Next we need to look at battery specs. So here you can see it says 800 amps and this means cold cranking amps. And basically that means that the battery can deliver 800 amps for 30 seconds at 0 degrees Fahrenheit without dropping below 7.2 volts. But all you need to know is make sure that any new battery you buy has the same number of amps as your current one or better. And then the next number along that you can see here is 80 amp hours. Again, just make sure that the new battery you're buying has the same number or better. 80 amp hours means that this battery can supply 12 volts at 80 amps for one hour. And in general, the higher this number is, then the better. Okay, so let's move on to option two, which is a battery upgrade. So putting in a more powerful battery. 
So you actually have two options for upgrading a battery. The first is a battery that's exactly the same size but is just more powerful. And the second is, and this relies on your battery tray being able to handle it, is to put a larger battery in. So this is how I replaced my TVR's battery with a similar sized battery but with more power. As you can see the existing battery was about the right size for the battery tray so there wasn't an option to put a bigger battery in here. But by changing the standard flooded battery which is a 072 to the AGM equivalent N72. You can see here that although the amp hours stayed about the same, I was able to get a battery with a much higher cold cranking amps available. And because I also upgraded to an AGM battery, this type of battery is much more able to handle multiple starts. And as you can hear, once I'd fitted it, the TVR had never turned over so quickly. So I mentioned earlier that there might be a possibility of putting a bigger battery into your car, and that that was battery tray dependent. Well, here's why. On a lot of modern cars, if you look at the battery tray, there'll actually be two positions for the battery clamp, especially on German cars, but some other manufacturers as well. And often the clamp will be set on the smallest battery setting, so that gives you an option to just literally move that clamp to its other position, measure the difference in length, and then go shop for a bigger battery. And this is how I did it on my BMW. By moving the clamp position to a new one, it meant that instead of the tray being 280 millimeters long, it became 315 millimeters long. And as a result, I could change from a 096 battery to a longer 115 battery. To find out a part number for the new battery size, all I had to do was put those dimensions into a website, like for example here Euro Car Parts, and then it brought up part numbers for batteries that matched those sizes. That's how I found out that the battery that I needed was a 115. And by also upgrading from the standard flooded lead acid battery to an AGM, then that gave me a lot more performance from the battery. Okay, so I hope you found the video helpful, and if you did, then please remember to give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, then please consider subscribing and clicking the bell to make sure you catch my next video. And if you had any comments or questions about the video, please post them in the comment section. I do read them, and I'll answer any questions if I can. Finally, part numbers and tools that I used in this video will be in the description below. Okay, well thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.